This session is titled Power BI Licensing. Right, Power BI Licensing Made Simple. All right, yes, it is. The sponsors make it possible for me to come here today to talk to you. So thank you so much, the sponsors. If you haven't visited the sponsors, go and talk to them. You have no idea just how much work the organizers have to go through to get these lovely people to come here today. Okay, so next. I hope like me, when you were a child, I'm gonna stand over there. You were excited when you got a new toy. A new toy inspired your imagination. For me, it was ski electrics. Ski electrics were fantastic. There's so much I could do with ski electrics. And there's some toys you got, like Evo can Evo stunt bike. The television adverts you see, do this, do that. And then my brother got it for his birthday, and we were so disappointed. Now, many years ago, I worked with SQL Server Reporting Services. It is an amazing product. It is fantastic, it's rock solid. But, when I was working about 10 or 15 years ago, it was dull. It was boring compared to the competition. And I got really frustrated. And I went to SQL Bits, my second SQL Bits, and I walked up to the Microsoft stand and I said, what is Microsoft doing about improving SSIS? The reply I got, that was a handheld microphone, you can tell it's just the one in the middle is picking up. Alright. I can't stay still, that's the only problem. So, what did the gentleman at Microsoft stand say to me? He said, just wait. Oh, thanks mate. Fantastic. But, with Excel 2010, they came up with this thing called Power Query. Power Map. Power View. Everything was Power Something. And as soon as I saw that, I could see the, what was possible. This tool was amazing. And that was my Skelectrics moment. Oh my God, what could you do with this tool? And it was fantastic. And at the time, my customers I was speaking to said to me, well, how do I share those reports with my customers? I was like, hmm, that's a really good question. And because of that, and because of the other companies I worked at, I had to do what I called a deep dive into Power BI licensing. And this, that's where this session came from. So I started reading blog posts, reading articles, and one person would say this, and then somebody else would say that, and you would hear this, and you would hear that. And the more I read, the more confused I got. I was like, what's going on? And it took him maybe a couple of years before I kind of finally got to the point where I thought, I'm beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I think I understand a little bit about Power BI licensing. And then one day the boss, my old boss, uh, sent an email and said, our customers want to talk about Power BI licensing. Who can answer it to the entire team? So five paragraphs later, I ended up writing five blog posts just about Power BI licensing and nothing else. So I reckoned I kind of understood a little bit. But at the same time, I realized that Microsoft were either missing deliberately or accidentally a massive part of the market. Now, most of my customers at that time were small to medium enterprises, SMEs. This is a definition of an SME. That may describe your company. Describes a lot of the companies that I was working with. In 2014, in the UK, 99.3% of companies were SMEs. It's important. This was my evil Knievel moment. Yeah, it was fantastic. Licensing is great. Until you look at the budget. And I got a bit annoyed. I got really grumpy. I thought, oh, come on. Surely the, there's got to be something could be done. I thought, No. I am going to see if there's something can be done to address this issue. And then one day I got an email out of the blue from a company. And I realized that if I thought outside of the box, if I didn't think Microsoft, there were other opportunities, other ways of sharing reports, which we'll talk about later. I should introduce myself. My name is Robert French. Yes, I'm the twit with the cravat that tweets out on a Friday morning 
dress up Friday, or in this case, I'm wearing a kilt. These are my contact details. Believe it or not, I like talking about this sort of topic. I really enjoy it. Okay. Feel free to email me, contact me, chat to me about it. What's the, what are my goals for this session today? What am I aiming at? This is a high level overview. I don't have time to go into the details. I would love to, and if someone wants to chat to me about them, I'll be delighted. And yes, it will be technically shallow. There's lots of detail, lots of ifs, ands, buts, whatabouts. We don't have time for that. If there are questions, great, fantastic. Raise your hand and I'll see if I can answer them when we are talking. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. I don't work for Microsoft, which is great for me. I can say what I think is good and what I think is bad about the different options. Because there are some amazing things in Power BI, particularly in licensing. But there are some things that just make me go, oh God, no, why did you do that? Now, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about free options first of all, because there are a lot of free things from Microsoft. I know Microsoft and free don't always go together, but it's true. We'll talk about the Power BI Pro license. How does that fit in? Then we'll talk about the Power BI Premium Per User license. Don't you just love that Microsoft Marketing want to add something new that is, does have a use? Then we'll move on to something called Power BI Embedded or Embedding. Yeah, you've probably never heard of it and you maybe never want to hear about it. There is one use case though for one person in the audience. Then we'll talk about Power BI Premium. Yeah, it's not cheap, but it's amazing. It's a fantastic product. The last bit we're going to talk about is thinking outside the box. Not thinking about Microsoft solutions. But some solutions offered by third partners that might be worthwhile looking at. So, let's get this presentation started. All credit to Eugene Meininger. I may have mispronounced mispronounce his name, I don't know. He did a session at SQL Bits, and I'm going to steal like an artist. There are broadly two different types of license from Microsoft, Power BI license. Yeah, I know, I can imagine probably thinking, God, is he never going to get started? There is a personal license. By a personal license, that's something that's given to an individual. So it's a bit like if you jumped on the bus today in Glasgow, you would get a ticket. Yeah, you would still get tickets, still print them. And that'd be given to you. That's your permission to ride in a bus that is shared with other passengers. Okay? There's also something called capacity licenses. So maybe your company said, all right, you're, there's maybe 50 or 60 people traveling to an office every single day and it's just cheaper to hire the bus and the driver let someone else maintain it and we can see who can get on that bus okay so free you do get some free options with microsoft from microsoft this is an example you can sign up for a free license from microsoft which is an example of a personal license it's given to an individual okay so people would go against an email address now you can share it with someone else if you want but you have to give them the password and the email address. You also get Power BI Desktop. It's free. That might not sound particularly exciting. If there's any, man I don't know if there's any managers here, but managers love the cost. That's usually the budget I was given for any project I was working on. There you go. There's your budget. Go on. What does it allow you to? Well, it gives you a passport to lots and lots of data sources. More data sources you can shake a stick at, Excel spreadsheets, CSVs, PDFs, SQL Server, Oracle databases, SAP. There's all, I think it's actually over a hundred different data sources, data connectors, sorry, built into Power BI Desktop for free right now. You can download it. You also get what's called an ETL tool. I'm an ETL tool. I'm a data plumber. So ETL stands for extract transform and load. That's built into Power BI Desktop. You may have heard of some of the other ETL tools, things like Informatica, Alteryx, Talend, ClickView Expressor, Tableau Data Prep and SQL Server Integration Services, SSIS. Okay, what else do you get? Well, let me tell you, you get a data warehousing tool built in. 
Maybe you don't believe me. The same data warehousing tool that you get built in is the same one that's used for enterprise. Like I said, just watch on your computer. If you happen to install Power BI Desktop on your machine, you can go to Tabular, sorry, go to Task Editor, and you'll see we've got SQL Server Analysis Services running. That's the same engine that you use for enterprise data warehouses for free. You get analytics language as well. This might not be totally exciting to you if you haven't discovered DAX yet. DAX is incredible. It's an amazingly powerful language. If you work with Excel formulas, you'll probably feel very comfortable. But believe me, it goes way beyond that. It's exceptionally powerful. You also get access to the service. So Power BI service, you can sign in and you can actually publish reports to the Power BI service. You get access to more, well, let me make sure I get this right. So Power BI visuals. By visuals, I mean things like bar charts, line charts. But it's more exciting than that. You can get GAN charts. You can get all sorts, you can get word clouds. There's something in there called Charticulator. Laura Graham Brown was talking about that. I like to create your own. Yeah. Just quick on, um, say you can upload it to the service. Yes. Is that Power BI Free will also upload to the service. But you can't publish, you can't share it with anyone if it's in the in free service. You need Power BI Pro to share it securely. And I'm glad you asked that question because guess what I'm going to talk about next? I'm going to talk about sharing reports, Power BI desktop reports. You can say, well, I would like to share my Power BI desktop report with someone else. You can, the same way that you email a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet to someone. Just do it. As long as you've got Power BI desktop in the same version, they can open it. You can also publish reports to the internet for free. Here's one I did earlier. This is published in my own personal Power BI free service. Just to repeat, that's the cost. Those are the upsides. Yay, fantastic. What are the downsides? Well, I did say you could publish reports to the internet for free if you got a free license. Only one caveat. There's no security at all. As soon as you publish that to the internet, anybody can see it. So what I say is about opening your doors to your house. This is not the technique you want to use if you're going to publish your confidential end of year financial reports. Just saying. Okay? But it's a good way if you want to build up your career and you want to publish reports. Some people say to me, I'm not a programmer. Why do I have to learn two more languages? That's a downside. I agree. So DAX and Power Query language is also called M. Um, don't ask me why, ask Microsoft marketing department. I love them. You get no support from Microsoft. It's a free product, so no official support. You're on your own. However, there is a massive community out there of people like myself who are very happy to help people. There's Microsoft official forums and there's all sorts of other ones. Find it on Twitter, Facebook, all sorts of places. So what's it good for? I think it's good for anybody, anybody that wants to explore data, wants to maybe see what Power BI can do. It doesn't cost anything. I think it's fantastic. Okay, Power BI Pro license. Now, now we're talking about spending some money. Okay, what's the cost? This is the cost. I think I checked this last night, I forgot though. I'm sure this is all, all it costs. Not a lot. What do you get? Well, first of all, it's a personal license. So it's allocated to an individual account. It's an email account. For example, I work for a company called Quorum. My Quorum account has a pro license associated with it. So it's only me effective and use it unless I give someone my email address and my password. And I'm not going to do that. So it just belongs to me. If you're lucky enough to have an Office 365 license, which I do, you get Power BI Pro built in for free. Or sorry, it's included in the cost. What are the upsides of Power BI Pro? Well, we talked about sharing. Yes, you can share Power BI reports with other people. The good thing here is you can share them securely. You can decide if you upload to the Power, if you upload to a workspace and Power BI service, 
using a workspace backed by a pro account, yet I don't have time to go into the technical details, you can say who can see that report and who can't. There's actually a bit more to it, but we don't have time to go into the details. You also have the ability to create apps. Apps, the best way I can describe an app is being able to bundle multiple reports into one package you can deploy at a time. It's a topic by itself to a certain extent. It's really worth exploring. However, Microsoft marketing department strike again. Power apps are not the same as Power BI apps. Yeah, I want to speak to Microsoft marketing. Really. The one thing I have to say grudgingly, Office 365 does work really well with Power BI. I admit it. Microsoft do actually do some things really well. You're able to integrate uh, Power BI reports into Teams, into SharePoint Online, all sorts of other things I don't have time to talk about. You also have permission to install a Power BI gateway. Get, gateway? Get, gateway! Oh dear. I think I was actually drinking something. So a Power BI gateway, an enterprise version that allows you to get data that's on premise, okay, in a company, and actually share it to the cloud securely. Okay. What are the downsides? Now, first of all, when you publish reports to the service, your data is secure. Nobody else can see it. However, you will suffer from probably, you might not notice it, it's something called noisy neighbor syndrome. That means that the resources, the compute resources that are used to run queries and to render your reports are shared with multiple people. What does that mean in practice? I was at Glasgow Airport and I forgot to refresh a data set. It's the reason why we have to manually do it. So I knocked up and I said, right, okay, there you go. Marketing department's all done. It actually took 25 minutes to refresh because when I ran it. The next morning, I ran it at a different time, much earlier, and it took 39 seconds. Same data set, same refresh. Noisy neighbor syndrome. Okay. If you don't have a Power BI Pro license, you cannot share reports securely with someone else. Okay, so Power BI free license, you want to be able to get into that workspace to see this backed by a Pro account. You want to see reports? Nope. Power BI Pro license? Yes. What's it good for? Probably small companies. I would say maybe about 100 licenses. It just depends. So a small company wants to share reports internally, perfect, really good, worthwhile investing in. There is a bit of a cut-off point, it depends. We can chat about that if you want to. The next one is Power BI Premium Per User. You're like, okay, not another account, not another type. This costs, yeah, there we go, that's how much it costs. Like, wait a minute, you just talked about Power BI Pro, and he's talking about Power BI Premium per user. This, again, is an individual license that's allocated to an individual account. What are the upsides of it? You get most of the features of Power BI Premium, but one. Well, actually, a couple, but one you'll be very interested in. So the first thing you get is a little diamond. A little diamond there's a little person. You get a larger model size. So in Power BI Pro, your model size is up to one gigabyte. With Power BI Premium, it's up to 100 gigabytes. Now, if you manage to get 100 gigabytes, I will be impressed because the VertiPack engine is incredible in terms of compression. But that's another topic, which is lovely. What else do you get as well? You have the ability to host in this Power BI service SSRS reports. Now, Microsoft Marketing, for some reason, or somebody has decided to call them paginated reports. It's just SSRS. Seriously. If you look at the report builder, what you'll find is you can probably, you should be able to import SSRS reports from on-premise and publish them to the service. But they'll, uh, don't get me started, it's great. Now, you may not find this topic particularly interesting. Next thing, you get Read-write XMLA, XMLA endpoints. Yeah, that's really interesting. I'm so glad you told me about that. And that's my reaction when I heard somebody called Alexander Arverson talking about it. Where it means that you can connect Excel directly to data sets sitting in service. 
If you're working in an enterprise context, you get to be able to use third-party tools, such as Tabular Editor, uh, DAX Studio, and all sorts of other lovely jubbly stuff I don't have time to talk about. Interestingly enough, and I always, this always surprises me, Tableau can consume XML endpoints. That means you could connect your Tableau report to a Power BI data set on the service. Yeah, I know it's like, well, once you start looking at this, it gets quite exciting. You also have access to the uh, Artificial Intelligence Machine Learning Studio, all those features in Power BI. That is very powerful. And there's more. I just don't have time to go into it all, I think. What are the downsides? You're going to love this. This is great. Okay, so content sharing. You're thinking, right, okay, I've created a workspace that's backed by a premium per user account. And all these premium features are just amazing. I can share it with everybody. Microsoft said no. And the way they explained it just makes me feel like this. Because in the documentation, this is how they explain it. Now, if you've got time to read that and digest it, it does make sense eventually. What does this mean? Okay, so if we have a workspace, a workspace is a folder or a container on the service. It can be backed by different types of licenses. Okay, I'm going shallow. I'm not going into detail. So it's backed by a pro account. So a free account cannot access the content in there. A pro account can, and a premium per user can. You can also create a workspace that's backed by a premium per user account, but, but pro can access the content. Yeah. That's how Microsoft explained it. What's it good for? Why should you even consider this? Well, if you want to explore the premium features, because you cannot share it with anybody else unless they have a, a PPU account, then you might want to say, well, why should I worry about XML endpoints? Why should, can I take my SSRS reports online, on-premise, and put it up to the service? What about these 48 refreshes a day? Would that work in this context? I would say for development and testing, this is one account that's worthwhile doing, worthwhile looking at, because you get all the features, most of the features should say, that as a developer, you want to check, does that work? Will it work in this context? What if I poke it and do that? That's one way of doing it. Right, you probably never heard of Power BI embedded or embedding. Welcome to my world. This is an example of what I refer to as a capacity license. So this is where a company will say, well, I want to be able to let anybody within my organization be able to see reports. And Microsoft, in their great and wonderful wisdom, have created two different types of embedding or embedded. The first one, I should say a SKU, by the way, uh, a SKU stands for shopkeeping unit. I always struggle with that. So the first one is an Office 365 and EM SKU, which is the embedding SKU. Yeah. What are the upsides of it? Well, you can embed reports, Power BI reports, into SharePoint Online or Teams securely. Well, the people consuming the reports do not need a Power BI Pro license, as far as I understand. Now, you will need some in your organization with at least one Power BI Pro license to be able to publish to the service. That might change in the future. Who knows? Now, I should say that's within an organization. By an organization, I mean an Office 365 tenant. Yeah, it gets complicated. Okay. What are the downsides? Well, you're thinking, yeah, fantastic. I will just, I can let anyone see the reports. I can share my external customers. No, you cannot. There might be a way around it, but I'm not going to suggest what it is. Now, the next thing is pricing. First of all, there's two, the first two SKUs, the EM1 and EM2, suffer from noisy neighbor syndrome. You also can't buy them or get the price unless you're an Office 365 volume customer, volume licensed customer. You can buy an EM3 SKU, and you can see the price there. 
Okay, really simple and easy to buy. Go to Office 365 Admin, goes in the admin portal, clicks on there and says, yeah, I'll sign up for it. And it says lovely things like, yeah, you'll pay, you'll pay by monthly. It's actually a 12 month contract you're signing up for. You may be able to pay the bill monthly, but it's a 12 month contract. Right, are you loving this so far? It's great. Welcome to my world. Next type of a SKU is the A SKU. Yes, this is completely different. And this is what I was speaking to Jamie about this morning. This is aimed at independent software vendors. So someone's created a software product, maybe online, a, a web portal or something like that, and they want to publish Power BI reports, and they want that report to look like part of their application. One of our customers actually uses this just now. This is a completely different pricing model from every other one, though. Yay! The only, way I can, the only analogy I can come up with is a parking meter. So if you park your car in a parking meter, beside a parking meter, and you park it there for an hour, you pay for an hour. If you park your car there for two hours, you pay for two hours. If your car's not there, you don't pay anything. Confused? Okay. There's a concept, so I should say that if you sign up for this, you can sign up, anyone can sign up for this in Azure, I think. I've got one, I've got my own uh, ASKU. There's no upfront costs, there's no termination fees, you only pay for what you use. I think they build to the minute, but I think they talk in the documentation to the hour. I also talked about this thing called pausing the service. If you pause the service, you do not pay any money. If you pause the service, any reports in the workspace are backed by the service, you cannot access them. I will come to that a little bit later on. You can scale up and down. So I think it's, um, I think it's A1 to A6 in UK South and North. So you can scale up and down. More power, more money. Lower power, less money. You can securely share with anyone. There is a caveat we'll come to in a minute. So what are the downsides? Pricing to me, right? Now, the thing about the A4 SKU I should point out, just I love this, A4 SKU is a equivalent of a P1 SKU we're gonna talk about later on, okay? That's important because I'm gonna talk about that in relation to something else. Now you're thinking, yeah, I could buy that and I could, what I could do is I could publish my Power BI reports to the SharePoint Online and Teams. No, Microsoft cut that one off. I think it was possible about a year ago, but Microsoft say no. The man from Del Monte say no. It can only be purchased through the Azure portal. This bit I really dislike, but you, it's true you're guard already. I dislike Microsoft documentation because it talks about for the EM and ASQs, the app, I think it's sorry, the ASQs, the app owns the data. What does that mean? That's what you're asking yourself, and that's what I asked myself for many months. What does that mean in practice? You cannot access reports that are in the Power BI service if you're using an ASQ. Well, you can, but technically, if you're sharing with external customers, you shouldn't be doing that. What you should be doing, and what our customer does, is you set up a separate authentication method. You cannot use Azure Active Directory to authenticate external users. So you get a web developer comes along and he develops an, a different authentication method and then uses something to communicate back to Power BI, it's okay for that user to see that report. Yeah, are you confused yet? Because I was. So, ASQ, web dev, separate authentication. Okay, come and talk to me about it. What's it good for? Independent software vendors. That's you, Jamie, I'm thinking of. That, if you've got web developers, they will love this. We have a customer that loves this because it's cheaper. They can scale up and down. We have one customer where we pause the service between uh, 6.30 or 6 o'clock at night and it doesn't get switched back on until 9 o'clock the next morning, 8 o'clock the next morning. And it's all done by PowerShell automatic, automatically because they use that as their, currently as their development environment. Power BI Premium, yes! This is also a capacity license. So you're deciding, your company said, I'm going to buy the bus and I'm going to say, you can go on, you can go on, but you can, okay? They can decide who can use that bus. So the person coming onto the bus doesn't have to have a Power BI Pro license. 
you can securely share with anybody. I've kind of let that bit back. Oh dear. So, if you've got a workspace backed by a premium per capacity, don't ask me why. This is I'm talking from the service. Actually, this is what I'm sure that's what it says in the service. If your workspace that contains the reports is backed by premium ca per capacity, a P1, a P SKU, you can decide who can get into it. But they don't need a Power BI Pro license. So you can share with external customers. You get much bigger models. Uh, with premium per user, it's uh, 400 gig 100 gigabytes. With um, premium, it's 400 gigabytes. If you're at that stage, my goodness, I want to see the model you're playing with. That's just amazing. You get 48 refreshes a day. With Pro, you only get eight. SSRS, XML endpoints, read write, machine learning services. You also get multi-geo deployment management. So if you wanted, if you're just a massive company and you have uh, somebody in the States and somebody in Japan, somebody in the UK, you actually decide where your data goes and you manage it from premium. I've yet to find a client that wants to use that. That'd be great if I could. You also get something called auto scale add-on availability. Has so anyone worked in finance? Anyone worked, worked with finance departments? End of year, end of month. Oh, we need, we have to have. Oh, I, I can't wait. So you've used up all your capacity. You can actually scale out. You, there is the ability to kind of, I think they describe it as bursting. But you do pay for it. But that little bit of capacity you need to get the, month, month, the end of year reports done that is available. Okay. You also have... Let's make sure get Bring your own key. There are some organizations that don't trust Microsoft. I've heard about Microsoft data centers getting into them. It's just like, whoa, really? So what you can do is you can bring your own encryption key and you can encrypt your own data in the service. So even Microsoft cannot get hold of it, cannot even access it. The downside is if you lose the key, well, you know what I'm saying. Now, if you're lucky enough to have SSRS running on-premise, this gives you a key that will allow you to host Power BI reports on an SSRS instance. Okay, it'll upgrade it. So it's a bit like, uh, I'm quite sure to describe this. Okay, so you've got SSRS running. You install this bit of software. This software will allow you to upload Power BI reports so you can have them just on your on-premise server. Why would you want to do that if you've got Power BI Premium in the clouds? I can think of maybe one or two edge cases, but this might be important. I'm trying to think, oh yeah, there was one client where that was important. Yeah. Okay, so that's nice. What are the downsides of Power BI Premium as far as I'm concerned? Well, yeah, the price. not cheap. And I'll be honest with you, I was speaking to a lot of clients and I was saying, right, P1, P1 SKU can do this, this and this, and by the way, it costs. And they were like, that's wonderful, thank you very much, I really appreciate you giving me that information, we'll have a think about it and maybe get back to you. I'm still waiting. What's it good for? If you are a big organisation, you need to share reports externally. You've got a lot of users. That is the tool. That, however, is probably out of scope in terms of budget for probably most people here. Surprisingly enough, I was speaking to a client the other day, and apparently the business went out and bought a P1 SKU. Didn't tell IT, just went, ah, we'll go and buy it. I was like, oh yeah, this is good. Come and talk to me. I'll tell you all the exciting things you can do. Now, even I'm scaring myself. You are no doubt thinking, you're probably thinking, you had, well, if I want to share Power BI reports with someone externally, the choices I have are Microsoft, 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 or possibly Microsoft. And there's only one way to do it. No. I was quite surprised. There are ways of sharing Power BI reports 
without using what micro well, you have to use some of the technology. Now, my granny had a saying, my mum has a saying, says, call canny. What does that mean in English? It means be careful, be aware, think about what you're doing next. So I'm going to do something silly, she says, well, be call canny. Be aware of what you're doing. So I'm going to show you some things and I'm going to show you my research. I encourage you to do your own research. Okay? So, I was sitting in my previous company, I got an email in from a company called DevScope. I've been looking at for something called Power BI Tiles. It's actually a really good product. And he emailed in, he said, would you like to share Power BI reports with your, uh, your external customers? We now have Power BI Portal. And I was like, hang on a second. No, 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 no. The only way you can share reports exter to external customers is if you go buy a Microsoft product. And I said, well, actually, We'll give you a portal or a web page. You can customize for yourself, make it look like your own. Now, the other thing they said when I was chatting through to them, they says, well, talking about the eSKU, because you buy an eSKU as part of this. Now, I'm sure as a, if you came in here, you'll notice the lights were actually dark out there, because this is a PIR. You don't leave the lights on your office 24-7, 365, just in case Jim from accounts wants to come in at two o'clock on a Sunday morning to finish the end of your reports. Well, you've got a light switch or a PIR. So it's not on, you don't pay for it. They have the ability built into the Power BI portal, and by the way, they've got another product, it's very similar, that will pause the ASKU if nobody is using it. And I thought that's quite dinky. You can securely share with anyone. I know you're asking me, well, how much does it cost? Well, let's look at the components. And these are the components you need to purchase. Okay, so there's four components required. I'll speak to DevScope, they'll explain all of this. You purchase a Power BI portal, and uh, this is still a current price. It's in euros, excuse me, I've converted it to pounds. And when I did the calculations, this is what I came up with. So, my calculations say but based on the assumptions I made, which may not be applicable, may not be for your organization, if I was running, say, 10 hours a day, Monday to Friday, service, uh, does your service never pause, then you pause the ASQ, it will cost you half of what a P1 SKU will. But you can effectively do similar things. If it's a key that you have to share reports, this is a possibility. Now, there are probably people in the audience, probably half of you are going like, yeah, right, aye, 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 good, he's at it. As we say in Glasgow, that means I don't believe you. Well, let's look at the numbers. What are my assumptions? Well, it's running 52 days, so a number of working days per month. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to quit quite a little faster here. 22 working days per month. You can check my figures, the, um, the slide deck's up on the SharePoint portal. Monthly cost. I checked these this morning. I think they are bang on. There is an Azure calculator. Please double check and speak to um, DevScope. So here's how I arrived at those figures. It may vary for your organization. But is this worthwhile looking at? I think it's worthwhile considering. There's a lovely gentleman in Australia called Matt Allington, and he feels the same way as me. Microsoft is not offering a solution to SMEs to share the reports externally. And here's his web blog about it. So it's not just me feeling this way. And I think about a year ago, Matt uh, tweeted out about a new service he's sharing called powershare.com. So I emailed uh, uh, Matt and said, look, I want to speak about this. What are the details? And he said, uh, $2,000 setup, one-off payment, two pounds per named user per login per month. That's an annual cost. Uh, if you want to pause the service, you'll have to set up a or require one um, Power BI Pro license. Also, if you want to start and stop the capacity, uh, the small cost of about twenty dollars a month. This is another possibility. Microsoft know about this. It's just using Microsoft tools in a different way. There is a new company that I haven't had a chance to speak to. ReportingHub.com. Same principles. DevScope white labeled portal these are the prices i 
Not 100% sure, so I haven't had a chance to contact, but I suspect you'll probably have to add in some other additional Azure services. But it's cheaper on a P1 SKU. If your goal is to share externally, this is worthwhile researching. Now, got seven minutes left. Okay. You'll probably fall asleep at this point. This is not a riveting subject. I understand that. I spent hours looking at this stuff. I know how boring it is. So some of you might not have, uh, might have fallen asleep at this point and thought, oh God, no, is he still talking? No. Oh. Is he shut up yet? So in conclusion, I just want to repeat what I've talked about. So there are two types of license. There is the personal license that's given to an individual. That's the free license from Microsoft. Yes, they do give away things for free. And I didn't talk about the Power BI visuals. Yes, I did. That's good. I'm glad I covered that. And I think it's amazing what they actually do give away for free. But what they'll do is they'll give you a little bit. And they'll say, well, okay, you want some more? I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to pay for it. And you get hooked. Well, I got hooked. Power BI Pro license, just fantastic. That allows you to share reports securely if the other person has a Power BI Pro license. Yeah, I was about to rant there. I suppose I could rant. There was a time in the past where Microsoft actually, if you had a pro license, you could share with free users. But they locked that one down rather quickly for obvious reasons. A bit grumpy that day, I have to say. <laughs> Power BI Premium per user. If you want to check as developer, could I do this? Your boss comes say, you need to tell me if this is possible. Well, hang on a second. I'll go and check if it was possible using Premium. Before you... You shell out £45,000 per annum. Sorry, £4,500 per uh, month. Oh, I can't remember. A lot of money, essentially. You can check. Okay? You can check if it's possible. Capacity licenses. This is great if your organisation wants to be able to share reports internally using an embedded, known as embedding, BEM SKU. So you can share it internally. That's great. Or you're going to embed it into SharePoint Online or to Teams. Now, if you've got a web dev, web developers are amazing. May not like a very good SQL, but hey-ho, that's fine. Sorry, Jamie, I couldn't resist that. Um, this is an amazing product. One of our clients is using this right now to share with several hundred customers in their web portal. It looks, you, walk, you log in, it looks exactly like the rest of the portal, but I know it's Power BI underneath because I was one of the people who helped build the Power BI reports. Power BI Premium is just amazing if you have the budget, okay? It's not cheap. However, it's not just Microsoft that will allow you to be able to share reports. So there are third party options. It does require you to think outside the box, to think in a different way. So DevScope, I had a conversation with them, they're lovely. I really enjoyed the conversation. That's where I got all my details from. PowerBIShare.com. Possibly maybe a smaller company this may be worthwhile looking at. I would maybe re uh, contact them, email them, ask them, is it possible? I don't know what your budgets are. That's the only thing. The Reporting Hub. Again, another white label tool. It allows you to create a portal that looks like your company portal, that you've created it, but you can share reports externally. Obviously, there's going to be some caveats there. Speak to them, find out what the ins and outs are. Okay. What do I like about the last three options? It puts you in the driving seat. You're the one making decisions. No longer should I use that SKU or that feature or that service from Microsoft. There are other options. Microsoft have made these tools available. Why not use them? Okay. This is not the most exciting subject. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm not interested in whether you take up these options. I just like talking about Power BI licensing. Seriously, I do. It's rather strange that my boss puts me in the customer and says, go and talk about Power BI licensing. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So have a conversation with me. Contact me. I am delighted to talk about it. There's all sorts of ins and outs, reasons why you might want to use uh, some reason to use something else. Feel free to talk to me. It's been an absolute pleasure and delight to speak to you this afternoon. I've got three minutes left. 
In those three minutes, I want to say thank you so much to the sponsors. The sponsors make it possible for me to talk about Power BI licensing. It's great. I actually enjoy this. And make sure you go and have a chat to all the sponsors in the stands. Just say hello. If you sign up for their um, mailing list, well, you can always unsubscribe next week, but they don't know. But it'll make the conference organizers really happy because they'll go, oh, we got a thousand people added to our list at Scottish Summit. We need to come back next year. If I use unsubscribe next month, hey, I didn't say it. Oh, it's just recorded, but hey, I'm sure the sponsors already know that. Does anybody have any questions they would like to ask at this stage? Yes. Yes. Is there an uplift to get from E5 to user uh, So the question is, uh, just make sure I get it right. So the E5 license, the Office 365 E5 license has Power BI Pro built into it. Do you pay any more to get the premium per user account? The answer to that question is yes. Ask me why I know that, because I had to ask my company to do that. So I had an Office, 3, Office 365 E5 license and I said, I want Power BI Premium per user because I need to go and check these features. Next question. Yeah, um, I've had probably more than 30 on the alternative of the low-market subscribers. Is it possible to get the Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So the gentleman was saying they, he was just maybe don't look at the third party options because you're looking for a long term relationship. I completely agree with that. I understand. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as I said, um, so as I said in my previous slide, be careful. Stay safe. Go and do your research and make sure you're aware of all these options. So if you do go to a third party company, they may go out of business. That's a risk, yes. The only time I've seen Microsoft adjust, so the question was, does Microsoft always pay, expect the customer to pay retail? In my experience, I have absolutely no idea except one exception. So in one exception where I know for, for sure it's different. All the customers I've spoken to all use uh, P1 SKUs and they pay retail, but I don't see the invoice, so I have no idea what they're paying. And trying to get pricing at Microsoft is, well, challenging. If you go through your Sorry? If you do by CSP, the licensing, then you have lower price. I'm going to speak to my boss because we're part of your CSP. Yes? Are there any prices available? Any what, sorry? Give up. If I had some chocolate bars, I would throw it down there. Yes. We were working with a client who's a charity. They have to be, first of all, as this is the UK, so there's all sorts of caveats here. They have to, I think they have to be a registered charity. And then they need to go and register with Microsoft, who say, are you a charity? And then apparently you have to go through some loops, hoops and whatever to jump through. But yes, they're paying, I think, I think, they're, get, they're just in the process of purchasing a P1 SKU, and I think it's 25%. I think, I haven't seen the invoice, so I don't know. And I struggled, I had to go and speak to some Microsoft people from the CAT team. And the guys in the CAT team had to go and speak to Microsoft to find out if that was possible. So, yes, you can get cheaper prices. There is possible. And that's why I say I, I can't go into all the detail. There's lots and lots of lovely detail. But anyway, I'm now 1 minute and 22, 23 seconds over. It's been an absolute pleasure and delight. If you want to ask any other questions, I guess I'm not easy to miss, as you can see. Come and speak to me. Email me if you don't want to. have got amazing sessions going on. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. It's been an absolute delight and pleasure to speak to you.